Hello, Internet. Do you ever have those moments where you're sitting alone and you realize something and it really sinks in and you feel it? Are you feel it? Growing up, I didn't have friends. That's a very general, broad statement to make because it's not that I didn't have or experience forms of friendship, but overall, <laughs> the through line was that I don't have friends. I was always the child who was quiet, considered shy, a loner. I've always been a introverted type of person and I didn't talk to other people very much or I didn't initiate conversation. That was not something that I had grown up naturally doing. I hadn't considered it a problem as a kid, something that needs to be fixed. However, other people in my life would tell me that it is an issue, that it is a problem, that it is something that needs to be worked on, that I need friends, that I need a social circle, that I need people. I got my idea of how to interact with other people Primarily, I think, through television, through movies, by watching how other characters interact with each other. I would sometimes try to replicate that. And it wasn't a genuine desire to communicate with other people. It was more like, I'm playing a role. I'm playing this character. In school, I was always the kid who sat alone at lunchtime reading a book or writing or just hiding in the bathroom. I don't know how many other people can relate because this isn't something that I hear a lot of people talk about. But when I was a kid, I mean, from elementary school up to high school, I would spend my lunch hours alone. I needed something to do. I needed a place to go because everybody else had their friend circles. They were off doing what friends do, <laughs> sitting and talking about stuff i don't i don't even know playing soccer but it was always me and my safety object was a book i did not have a phone i didn't even have a phone until i graduated high school it was always some form of a book either a novel or a notebook where i could write that was my safety object i would either ideally be able to sit in the classroom and read by myself or if I needed to find somewhere outside a bench and sit and read on the bench. As I got older and realized it feels somewhat embarrassing to be alone. <laughs> like I didn't want to be seen eventually while all the other kids have a friend group. When I was very young when I was in elementary school, I didn't really think about it, initiating conversations or that I have to be anything. I just did what I felt like doing, which is like sitting by myself and drawing or reading. But that was definitely something that teachers commented on, I became more self-conscious. Eventually, I would sometimes spend or often spend my lunch hours hiding in the bathroom. I would just go to the bathroom stall and just like stand there for a long time. But of course, you can't do, you can't be in there the whole time because somebody's going to notice. It's like what? Like someone's going to notice. There were always lunch hour monitor people or teachers or other students. Sometimes I would wa I would go into a stall, sort of time myself, give myself a couple minutes. I'd get out and I and then I'd go to another stall, so that it wouldn't seem like there's the same person in the same stall. When we had different bathrooms in the same school, I would go from one bathroom to the next bathroom that's down the hall around the corner, and just pretend like oh I'm not I'm not coming from one bathroom going to the other bathroom. I don't have like stomach issues. I <laughs> but I was just hiding because I didn't want to be seen alone. That was embarrassing. There were a lot of lunch hours where I didn't eat my lunch. There were admittedly times when I was like, I am very hungry. I also had an issue with eating in public. I did not feel comfortable eating specifically in the school environment, specifically when I was alone. So either I wouldn't eat during the lunch hour or sometimes when I was starving, I would shove a sandwich down my throat while I'm standing in the bathroom stall, which is disgusting. I, I think, I mean, if that's like you do that for some reason, it's your life but it felt like the only option <laughs> for me to be able to eat something. And so I would hide in the bathroom stall and eat something. There are germs, there are germs in the air, there's particles, but I did that, okay, sometimes. There was a parent-teacher meeting that we had one time. The teacher, she said to me, why don't you, why don't you play with the other kids, why? And I just said, cause I don't feel like it. And that was the most honest truth. This is when I was in elementary school. I never learned how to be comfortable socializing. For some people, it came naturally. For me, it, it didn't. 
really, to the extent of my memory. It was a mystery to me. I didn't understand how people form friendship groups and just start talking to each other just because they feel like it. Like, what did they say? Is this fun? There were times in my life growing up where I did have some form of, again, a friend, but sometimes my the joy that came from that would be in my ability to replicate the kinds of relationships that I would see on TV, the kinds of characters that I would see on television and how they would interact. I eventually very much took on uh, in my own head an identity of being the weird kid, the loner, the weird kid loner who just didn't have friends. And that wasn't just me. There were a couple other kids, a couple other people who had commented on that about me and also to me about being weird. I was also a very quiet person. I still am in ways, but a lot less so now. But also it depends on the circumstances. So not talking did not help my situation of not building connections with other people. Why didn't I talk? Why didn't I say things? Again, the desire wasn't there that I can recall ever really identifying. There are exceptions, but there was a lack of desire and also a lack of knowledge of what I should say. What do I talk to other people about? I don't know encountering the same issue over and over and over again of I am alone, I don't have friends. One of the worst feelings for someone who doesn't have any friends, who is quiet, who is socially anxious in school is make your own groups for a group project. The worst, most anxious feeling when you have to choose, cause you don't have, everybody is obviously, everyone else is excited cause they have friends, they have people to sit with, which felt embarrassing felt embarrassing. I felt kind of like a burden, like I didn't want to interrupt other people's friendship circle <laughs> groups, but I need, needed somewhere to go. But there were multiple times when the teachers, particularly in an elementary school, would uh, ask some, some students, some girls, to talk to me and to invite me to hang out with them at lunch. This happened both when I was in elementary school and also when I was in, in middle school. High school I was on my own, but... <laughs> At first I didn't realize that the teachers had asked these girls to hang out with me. There were times when I had said no, because I didn't feel like it. There were a couple times when I did say yes, went and followed them around, probably didn't really say anything, but just followed them around. So I was with a group of people. And then I was told afterwards by this other girl that a teacher had asked these girls to ask me to hang out with them because I was alone. Maybe that brought up a trust issue. <laughs> Although on the reverse, I did not give out any signals, any sign that indicated that I wanted people to talk to me. I was very much the opposite. I was like very like metaphorical. I had spikes all over me, I think. Or that's, that's what I gather from other things that I have been told. There was a time when a counselor, there were several counselors that I did speak with uh, growing up. Everybody thought something, something was wrong with the quiet kid who had no friends. And I am grateful for all those people. Those counselors and those teachers and those youth workers, those people who did try to help me. Some of their advice or some of the things that they did, I do not agree with, but there was a counselor who had told a couple girls to, I literally just remember just like following them around. And then he told me after that he had asked them to invite me to have lunch together. And so this counselor eventually told me like, yeah, I, I asked these girls to uh, invite you to hang out, but then I saw you walking down the hall with them and it just looked like you'd been sent off to the guillotine or something. Like it looked like you were not happy at all. And that was true. <laughs> These couple of people weren't really people that I was interested in being around. And ooh, oh, there's a bug. Yeah, I was not happy. And then I eventually just kind of disappeared and left. Sat on my own again. Same thing in high school, spending my lunch hours alone. This time, eventually I did get some freedom. I could leave the campus. I could leave the school grounds. And so I would sometimes sit at the bus stop. I just walk down the street and go somewhere. Bus somewhere and then come back. Bus to the mall and then come back. Helpful in a way, because I was no longer hiding in the bathroom as much. I, I probably did it a couple of times still. Again lack of friends, lack of a social life. There was someone who, who did reach out to me and was very kind and sort of, in, and, and did invite me to be her friend. We were, and we did continue that, that form of friendship. And it was nice and wholesome. And I am forever grateful to that person. You know that idea of, oh, the extrovert adopting an introvert, like the extrovert reaches out to the introvert and then all the friends. And, and that was my experience. It was never me initiating a conversation, initiating a friendship, which yes, part of the problem. If you don't reach out to other people, you can't always expect other people to reach out to you and like try so hard to, to form a friendship and build a connection with you if you are doing absolutely nothing or if you never 
initiate a conversation, you're not helping yourself. But when you don't really understand how to do that, or you experience social anxiety, which doctor told me that I had when I was in high school, there were times when I wouldn't go to school because I didn't have friends because I was experiencing social anxiety. I would just tell, you know, my parents or tell the, you know, school that I, I wasn't feeling well. Like, I feel sick. Because that's all you can say is like, oh no, I feel sick. Once I also faked spraining my ankle because I was too uncomfortable to be in school in the social setting. I did experience anxiety when I came to socialization. That is something that was eventually recognized of, oh, you have social anxiety. I do take a medication for it that I've been on for several years, which is also for something else, but it's supposed to help. But that didn't really ever address the issues, which I don't even know exactly what they are. It could just be the way that my brain functions, the way that I function, my understanding or lack thereof of how to socialize. Uh, my brain gets confused. I don't know how to navigate the conversation. I get um, extremely self-aware and I have to kind of like calculate when am I gonna say something? Is can I can I start speaking now? What if they interrupt me? Should I should I contribute this thought or oh I have this thought but now it's too late to share so I'm just gonna wait. I haven't spoken in a while so they're probably thinking that like why is she even here? Why is she so quiet? This spiral of self-consciousness and then I get uncomfortable and then I wanna leave. <laughs> as soon as there are other people, I'm like ah <sighs> I don't know what to do. But also every year whenever school would start, a new class, a new something, a new group of people that I was gonna be around, I thought this, this first day, I am gonna be a new person. I'm gonna walk in with confidence and I'm gonna say things. I'm gonna talk to the person sitting next to me. I'm gonna compliment them somehow maybe. I am gonna be, huh, I'm gonna be new. I'm gonna be engaged. I will be, I'm gonna draw people in and draw myself out. Every year, that did not happen. I don't know what happens. Self-consciousness and just doubt that lingers too long. And then it happens multiple times. I am eventually in my head developed this identity of, okay, I'm the quiet kid. I'm the girl with no friends. And I thought, dang it, I missed my chance. And now I am doomed to be this way for the rest of the semester, the rest of the school year, or the, the rest of whenever I interact with these people who are currently around me and who probably have the perception of me being a quiet person. I remember in high school there was one counselor who gave me advice that I disagree with and I can understand where it was coming from and how it could be seen as helpful and how it may be seen as helpful in some situations but I disagree with it and that advice was fake it Till you make it in some situations, that could be applicable and helpful. But I remember she told me when I walk into a room, when I walk into say a classroom, just act like you're confident or basically act like how the other kids act. That's not exactly what she said, but that's basically what she was saying. I found that advice to be very invalidating of what I was experiencing internally and my confusion around social interaction, what I was experiencing in terms of what is referred to as anxiety that I was feeling. So I didn't find that helpful. Growing up, I was told basically that there was something wrong with me, but I didn't know what to do about it. And here I am still sometimes encountering the feeling that something is not quite functioning well. But it's important not to be so hard on ourselves, mean to ourselves, like why can't I just be like everybody else? Or those people over there who seem to have such an easy time just like talking and speaking their mind and having fun together. Why can't I be like that? Why can't I experience that? What is wrong with me? Let's not do that. That's not useful, that's not helpful and just makes you feel worse by yourself. Step one, being kind and gentle with ourselves. When you're someone who is not used to building those relationships, friendships, if you experience social anxiety and don't quite understand how socialization works in a natural way, if you're sitting there and constantly analyzing like how should I be engaging right now? That complicates the process. And that stayed with me into my 20s. I still do not have people who I consider close 
friends by my current developing definition of a friend or the idea I have in my head of a friend. So many times over the past few years, I have reflected afterward or during an interaction with somebody who may have been considered a friend, like I am playing the role, but I don't feel necessarily like I really connect with them or that I, I really love them in the way that I wanna love somebody, in a way that's strong and natural and comfortable and comforting. And part of the reason for that I recognize is my lack of initiating conversations. And I think when was the last time that I said, hey, do you wanna go and do this something or other? Whatever friends do, wanna go on a hike? Not that I would do that even with a friend though. I, I, I enjoy the occasional upward walk. When was the last time I initiated that? Ha, ha, ha. Very difficult to think. That kind of shows me that I don't do that often. And maybe part of that is that I am so used to growing up having other people come to me or having other people tell people to come to me. And so I don't have that practice. There's that of being one's own barrier, the boulder in the way of exploring something new or of having something. I am my own obstacle. What I really want is, I don't like to talk about social media in it, but it's like real. When you see images of friends or particularly for me, women hanging out and laughing together and like hugging each other and just, I want to do that. But, but in a way that's genuine and natural. I don't want to play a role. I don't want to play a character, but I want to know what that's like. You know, an issue that I had growing up is I literally don't know how to initiate and continue a conversation. For some people, it's like natural. You just go, hey, how's it going? Blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, okay, I got to go up there. When are they talking with someone else? Can I, can I interrupt? Should I say something? Should I just walk up and stand there? Should I say hello? Do I comment on something contextual? A lot of analysis going on. So that poses its own challenge. I know that I'm not the only one who experiences, who, who has had this kind of experience in their life um, where their friendships have been limited or not on a level of connection that they have seen or, or you know, felt like they've witnessed other people have. For it can be a source of sadness of some kind when you want to have an experience or you want to know what it's like to connect in a particular way with, with other people, but you don't know how. There is so much to unpack. You, you think one thing is the issue, but then it can be like a whole bunch of other things. How to explore yourself and your needs and your history and your life and your upbringing and your understanding of yourself. I believe that it is so important to recognize how you're feeling, access what is authentic to your own experience. You may encounter challenges with that, but that does not mean that you should deny everything that you're experiencing in order to pretend to be like other people because you're not, maybe you don't function the same way that, that other people function. And that's another kind of topic that one can delve into. Since that time, several years ago, I have found it increasingly easier to engage socially with people, but I still encounter challenges and have, I don't know if they would be, some might categorize them as panic attacks where I will panic and experience very heavy physical symptoms of that when I'm with people in social settings and that can be challenging. That's just something that's gonna be continually worked on as I experience more and learn more about myself and also what I have to offer. I can't just be sitting here complaining about what I don't have. What can I be of benefit specifically for them or to them? My grammar, I don't think that was a correct way to grammar. But gosh darn, it doesn't change the fact that it is challenging and challenging for me in ways that it wouldn't be challenging for a lot of other people. I want to know what it's like to have friends that I am so comfortable around. You know what I mean? Just like comfortable. I think the challenge now is that I do want friends. Back then growing up I didn't really want friends as much or for the same reasons, but now I'm actually more interested in social connections. I, I still don't really understand how. It's all part of the journey of finding authenticity or, or recognizing how to be authentic and not faking it till I make it and finding other people who can understand that. I think sometimes we just want to not feel alone.
not feel like an outsider or a weirdo. And I embraced those terms when I was growing up and I still embrace those. But I also isolated myself a lot and I still do. I think if there's anyone out there who has similar experiences or is yearning for similar connections, you don't have to fake anything. You don't have to pretend to be something else. There's that poem or th that piece of writing that is like, uh, it goes like, he had blue skin and so did he and but she covered it up and, and they both had blue skin and they never knew. Something like that. If you hide who you are or what you are or what's true to you, then someone else who can understand will never see that there is somebody else like them who understands. That was not very eloquently spoken, I'm aware, but I think you understand. I think a lot of us just wanna feel understood. Want to feel seen, we wanna feel seen. Don't we wanna feel seen? At the same time, we wanna hide, but we also wanna feel seen. We wanna feel seen by the people who can understand. And there are people out there who understand. If anybody sees this and feels similarly, <laughs> You're not the only person who feels that way. Sometimes it is helpful to know that other people can understand and have ex similar life experiences. I just wanted to say these things. I wanted to share these things with, I don't know who, you, hello, myself, anyone. This is Marley, this is my friend.